Well, South Africa's largest to private sector solid wood processor, York Timbers, has received unconditional approval that from the Competition Commission to acquire Iliad as Africa's timber wholesale business. So let's uh, chip into this story. We've got uh, York Timbers CEO Peter Fanzel joining us in the studio to tell us more about what's driving the timber se uh, sector right now and, of course, uh, your growth plans. Uh, firstly, on this acquisition here, 45 million rand acquisition, what is the rationale behind consolidation and, of course, bringing them uh, under your belt. Samantha, York traditionally sells bulk timber and uh, we assessed the market over the last few years and realized that we have to uh, change our approach to the market channel and uh, we have approached Iliad to look at their household uh, trading division and uh, we acquired it from them purely to get closer to our customers. Mm -hmm. It will give access to the Western Cape market where we don't have a big presence at the moment and also to increase our service delivery to our biggest market, the Gauteng market. Mm -hmm. yeah. So basically uh, improving distribution uh, for York. And that, that fits in with our future growth plans. Uh, we, a whole expansion program for the company, um, if you look at our share price lately, you know, there's a lot of volume being trading. Um, we think it's just shareholders taking profit after the right issue we did in 2010, late 2010, early 2011. Uh, but fundamentally, the company is restructured. We set ourselves up with an aggressive growth plan from an integrated site. We think that we will be able to reduce our pricing costs by a third. And th that's this despite, you know, of the huge increase in electricity and labor costs that you've just mm -hmm. mentioned in the previous interview. So we've aligned the business for that. So we're investing in the future growth. And this distribution channel is a critical part of that, mm -hmm. you know, and to see how we can actually, you know, uh, service the market much more better, more effective. Yeah. I mean, just looking at the kind of products that you sell to, uh, you sell timber to, to make, it's a scaffolding, it's furniture, it's a kitchen components, um, you know, pulp and paper. So across the board, um, how, how well have these various sectors been doing? I mean, in light of the fact that if I just, you know, just look at durable goods orders, furniture yes. sales yes. have been quite depressed as of late. Yes, yes. Uh, quite interestingly, that's quite a diverse market that we play in. Um, our approach is we don't in the solid timber market alone, we're in the fiber optimization market. So that, from that perspective, it's critical that you m must understand how those various segments move and move with each other. Um, one of the big drivers of late was the structural market, meaning roof trusses. And we, most of the sawmillings of Africa get their business towards that. However, what in our business, our plywood division have done exceptionally well the last 12 months, outperform all our expectations. So these things don't always tend to move in line with each other. Mm -hmm. So a diversification of the earnings line is critical, and that's also our approach. And then also those fiber that we sell off to mostly the pulp and paper and the chipboard MDF market, we don't get a fair price, you know, in our opinion, for, for the raw material that we process. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, you know, they're also under a lot of <laughs> pressure right now if we just look at, you know, the earnings yeah. that they've been posting. Yeah, and it's, uh, this is where the, the timber industry is in. It's all about cost. It's how you can optimize your cost structure in order to get a better return. If you think you invest in a biological asset for a 25-year growth cycle, then obviously you have to get sure that you get the optimal return from that investment. Mm -hmm. And therefore, our approach has always been not to cut costs, but rather to optimize the cost structure. So capacity utilization, looking at your employment uh, sector, you know, there's this minimum wage dispensation that came through from the minimum wage, had a major impact on the industry. Although you understand what the minister did, the suddenness of it was a problem for us, mm -hmm. but we have managed to put plans in place to see how we can get uh, you know, beyond that specific uh, huge increase overnight. But that's where we're in and we have to work towards that. But we still believe the fundamental market drivers are there, good demand for housing and infrastructural need. Mm -hmm. And we are gearing our business towards that, not just South Africa, but also Southern Africa. Yeah. I mean, is that, a, is that a market that you cater to right now or are you just evaluating um, to what extent you'll be able to export into it? Our, our biggest growth market is Southern Africa and we are gearing ourselves towards to, to, to really capitalize on that. We have developed some channels and I think with this Thorpe acquisition, we, we align ourselves more to what the specific big project markets are. Mm -hmm. Traditionally, we would sell through various channels to those big projects. And what we do with this acquisition is that we're going to enter more aggressively and service those big projects more, uh, more, uh, more better from a timber supply point of view. We're not going to go into other products. We'd rather would focus as a timber supplier with the range of all the timber related products that you need in order to do, you know, to construct a building or uh, create certain infrastructure.